Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so this morning, our study will be in Luke chapter 24. And we understand, of course, that uh, this is the last chapter of Luke. And here is also recorded the Great Commission uh, similar or in parallel with uh, Matthew and also with John. So we are looking at the topic of mission. And I would like to look at this morning, the message of mission. Ano ba yung minsahe na dinadala natin when we share the gospel? Ano ba yung laman ng gospel? And uh, we try to examine this based on the uh, gospel of Luke. So the biggest issue, right, uh, that we would like to address when we share the gospel we would like to address the most basic questions of life, most fundamental questions of life, questions that uh, since we are uh, have an idea, nagkakaisip, ay ito na yung unang mga tanong natin. Uh, sino ako? Bakit nandito ako sa mundo? At ang pinakaimportante ay may buhay ba? after we die, tayo ba ay mabubuhay muli or mamamatay na lang tayo at mawawala na? And uh, this issue, madalas ang nagiging tanong na hindi masagot pag ikaw ay hindi kristyano. This question is as old as time itself, as uh, historical record itself. In fact, uh, they say that Job is one of the first uh, books that was written in the Old Testament in the Hebrew Bible, and Job actually had this impression. In Job chapter 14, verse 1, he said that man who is born of a woman is a few of days and full of trouble. So we recognize that the life that we have here is very short. In fact, this is how he describes it. For there is hope for a tree, it will be cut down and it will sprout again and that its shoots will not cease. So sa nakikita niya, mas mabuti pa sabi niya yung tanem kasi yung tanem, pag pinutul mo, may tumutubo pa rin. Uh, Nag-grow pa rin, nagdadaon pa rin. Yung root niya ay magsisimula ng bago, panibago. Though its root grow old on the earth and its stump die in the soil, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put it out branches like a young plant. So sabi niya, mas mabuti pa pag tinignan mo yung mga tanim kasi pag namatay siya, nabubuhay muli. Pero ano yung, uh, ano yung observation niya tungkol naman sa tao? In verse 10, sabi niya, but a man dies in his laid low. Man breaths his lust. And where is he? As water fail from the lake and a river wastes away and dries up, so a man lies down and rises not again. Till the heavens are no more, he will not awake or be roused out of his sleep. Oh, that you would hide me in Sheol. You know, Sheol is the name Hades. This is also the place of the dead in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament that you would conceal me under your wrath be past, that you would appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? So if ever we have this mission, the question that we would like to address is this, if a man dies, shall he live again? I think this is uh, very fundamental. This is very basic to every man. Every person should be concerned about the next life or is there a life after death? So sa atin dito, nandito tayo sa Thailand, madalas they will talk, yes, I agree with that. May buhay na wal walang hanggan. It's a cycle. Uh, at ang sasabihin nila ay eh, Babalik at babalik ka naman ulit. But this is not the way the scripture say, uh, tells us. The scripture tells us that life is a linear. Linear, it's a line. 
It has a point of beginning, it has a point of ending. And Job recognizes that. So sabi niya, if a man guy shall he live again? So magtatanong tayo, ano ba si Job? Ano bang, uh, ano ang kondisyon ni Job? At does he know the answer? In fact, we find in Job chapter 19, verse 23, in his own words also, sabi niya, Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead, they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet my flesh, in my flesh, I shall see God. I shall see for myself, and my eye shall behold, and not another. So, si Job na nagtanong sa, jo, sa verse sa chapter 14, ay sinagot niya rin yung kanyang tanong sa chapter 19. Ang sabi niya, I know that my Redeemer lives. Sabi niya, although I will die, Verse 26, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Kaya importante na maintindihan natin yung principle ng Bible. Ang principle ng Bible is that we will have bodily resurrection. Bodily resurrection. Hindi lamang spiritual resurrection. Hindi, hindi tayo magiging spirit na lilipad-lipad kung saan-saan. No. We have a body. And kailangan maintindihan natin ito na ito yung promesa sa atin. And this is the concept that is given to us in the whole of Scripture, bodily resurrection. Which means that uh, we have a body that has to live in an earthly or a, a body or worldly structure. That's why when we look at the revelations in the last chapter in 22, Revelations 22, makikita natin the new heavens and the new earth, the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, going to this earth, and there we live forever and ever. Kaya uh, kailangan ma- ma-realize natin na this flesh is very important. That's why we try to protect our flesh, our body, because we understand that this is the temple. But at the same time, we will be given a glorious body. The same body similar and yet different, which is glorious. Ito yung nakikita natin kay Job. And this is the resurrection that we're looking for, forward. So you see in Job, as you see in the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the message of hope that we will live again after we die. And so we ask the question, what is the message of our mission? What is the message of our gospel? What is the message of our evangelism? Our message is not about us. Hindi yung puro tayo. Ah, pagka tinanggap mo yung Panginoon, magiging mabuting, mabuti ang magiging buhay mo. You will have health, wealth, and prosperity. Itong madalas na papakinggan natin, may problema ka ba? Tanggapin mo si pa ang Panginoon at masusob yung lahat ng problema mo. Problema ka ba sa pera? Masusob lahat ng Panginoon yan. Eh, kanya, pag-aari niya yung buong mundo. Is this the message that we will find in our mission? O di kaya, ang sinasabi ba ay sumunod ka sa sampung utos ng Diyos at ikaw ay mabibigyan ng buhay na walang hanggan. Ito ba ang message na nakikita natin? We have to realize that the message of our mission is a person. So yung sinishare pala natin, hindi yung 10 steps to a successful living or 10 steps going to heaven. Hindi ganun. Ang sinishare natin is the person of Jesus Christ. Si Kristo. We are Christ-centered in terms of our message. That's why we look at Luke chapter 24 again. Ang makikita natin, sabi niya, and he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. So sinabi niya na to, and we will look at some of those passages kung saan ni-remind na sila 
ni Jesus na kung ano mangyayari sa kanya because it was written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. It is all about me. The message of the gospel is all about Jesus and what he has fulfilled according to the scripture. So si Jesus ang ating mensahe. Ang dinadala natin ay ang pangalan ni Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So si Jesus, sino ba si Jesus? At ano ang ginawa niya para sa tao para siya ay magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan? So this is the message that we are bringing in our mission. In Luke chapter 24 verse 27, again, this is in parallel. So naalala natin na there is two persons, two disciples. One is named Cleopas and they were walking down the road and they were met by Jesus. This is what we call the road to Emmaus. And if you compare Luke chapter 24 when he showed himself to the disciples, the same or similar sequence of events ang nangyari din sa two disciples disciples dun sa road of Emmaus. So hindi sila nakilala and then uh, hindi nila nakilala yung Panginoon. And then Jesus sudden, uh, started to discuss the scripture. Nagkaroon ng Bible study and sabi dito, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So Magkikita natin the message of scripture. Kailangan yung maintindihan natin, kaya kailangan nating mag-aral. Kaya tayo nag sa Sunday school para pag-aralan yung Gospel of Luke. Actually, before we already studied the Gospel of John. Bakit ganun kaimportante yung pag-aral ng Gospel? Dahil andito yung kwento sa buhay at mga salita at mga gawa ng ating Panginoong Yesus. At ito ay dapat na memorize natin. Dapat kabisado natin. Why? Because this is the message. This is the things that we share about who the Lord Jesus Christ is according to the Gospels. Kaya uh, nung pinakita niya na, sabi niya, ito yung representation sa akin sa Old Testament. Sa Hebrew Bible. From Genesis to Malachi or from Genesis to Second Chronicles, kung Hebrew ang Bible ang uh, ginagamit mo. So ito lahat, sabi niya, mapagkikita dyan. And we will try to explore that kung ano yung magkikita natin doon. Again, ano yung person o ano yung tungkol sa kay Jesus na dapat ishare natin when we are doing mission? When we are sharing the gospel. In Luke 24, verse 45, again, sabi na nga, Then he opened the minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written. So this is what the Old Testament is telling you. That the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And this is what actually happened. So in the Old Testament, it was predicted during his time. It happened. And this is what we share. That we share the Christ that died but rose again from the dead. Ganito lang kasimple yung message natin. Why is there hope for people? Why is there reason for us to believe? And why are we confident that there is life after death? It is because the Lord Jesus Christ himself showed us historically with evidence, historical evidence that he died, but he rose from the dead. Therefore, we also die and we rose, we can rise again from the dead as he did. And he has his message on how is Uh, that going to happen, but we will discuss it further. So again, in uh, Luke chapter 9, we discussed this already. Uh, we are discussing in the book of Luke in our Sunday school. Kaya pagka nag-share ako ng uh, message, normally I will use the Gospel of Luke 
to be consistent sa ating mga Bible study at para ma-refresh ma tayo. When we're doing Sunday school, then we have the message which is also the Gospel of Luke, medyo madali at nagkakaroon ng continuity or interaction yung mga salita. In Luke chapter 9 verse 22, so nasa chapter 8 na tayo, and then sa Luke chapter 9, ang kwento dito is that the Lord Jesus Christ will be sending all His disciples, 12 of them, into the different parts of Israel to share the gospel. And then they perform so many miracles. And then when they come back, again, the Lord Jesus Christ performs so many miracles, but then uh, they, they were impressed. But Jesus Christ said to them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders in the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Nagapagtataka Dahil he was doing all these things. Gumagawa siya ng mga miracle. In fact, in John chapter 8, nang ginawa niya yung uh, the miracle of 5,000 which was recorded in the four gospels. You know what happened? What was the conclusion of the story? The conclusion was the people would like to forcefully make him king. Gagawin siyang hari. Kaya nga sabi... The Bible does not tell you that the people rejected Jesus to be king. They actually wanted him to be king. He was the one refusing to be king. Kaya ang sinasabi niya palagi, when we look at the story ng pinag-aaralan natin, palagi sinasabi niya, huwag niyong sabihin sa iba yung mga miracles na ginagawa ko. Paulit-ulit. Why? Because they have a wrong impression of the Messiah. They thought that the Messiah would be king that would give them freedom from Rome? Pero sabi niya, hindi. Ang freedom na binibigay niya at dinadala niya is the freedom from sin. Overcoming sin. And eventually, dito natin makikita, he's going to die for our sin. And so sabi nila, kaya takang-taka sila, hindi nila maintindihan because they, they are clogged to the old concept of the, of the Messiah who is a conquering Messiah. And this here is the Lord Jesus Christ holding himself the Son of Man and that is going to die. Pero they do not understand it during this time. Again, he predict, predicted in several locations more in Luke chapter 9. Again, he said they were marveled at everything he was doing. He said, let this word sink into your ears. The Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand saying it was concealed from them. And they could not perceive it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. So the Lord Jesus Christ has already been in several locations predicting his death. Again, in Luke chapter 17, he said while talking about eschatology, so madalas kasi when we talk about eschatology, we're talking about the future things. Okay, that is the word eschatos. That is the study of future things, eschatology. But when you think about the eschatology of the Old Testament, included in the future things of the Old Testament is the death of the Messiah. So yun yung first coming, there is death. They thought that it will be a conquering uh, Messiah, pero hindi. That's why he was talking in Luke chapter uh, 17 about the end of times. But sabi niya, before uh, everything matatapos itong mundo na to, they have to what? They have to kill the Messiah, the Son of Man. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. So, aside from predicting of his death, he also predicted his resurrection. And sabi niya, so Luke chapter 18, sabi niya, they are going to Jerusalem at the time. They are going to enter Jerusalem. And uh, the, the disciples and the people around, the crowd, are very exuberant. They are very happy and they really want Jesus to be king. Pero sabi ni Jesus, Sabi niya, it's not going to happen because the scripture has to be accomplished or to be fulfilled. 
for he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, that is to the Romans, and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. Again, they cannot understand anything that he's saying because they are hidden from them and they could not grasp what was being said. So the, this hidden or this mystery, this hiding, this misunderstanding or not understanding is not only at the time of the disciples, but also even in the Old Testament. Meaning it takes Jesus to explain and interpret the Old Testament and the Holy Spirit to open their minds for them to understand, but it is there. It's not very clear, but it is there. And Jesus Christ has to explain to them. And therefore, makikita natin that the source of our message is the Bible. Sabi niya nga rito, about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. We explained this already when we we're studying about the Bible, that in the Hebrew Bible, they divide it into three parts. Law of Moses or the Torah, the prophets or the uh, 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 Torah, uh, let me turn up. Nevi'im, the prophets, and the Psalms, which is the Ketuvim. All in all, they are called in acronym Tanakh, Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim. These are the three divisions of the Hebrew Bible, which is referred to as uh, the Old Testament. So the Old Testament must be fulfilled. In sabi ng Panginoon. So the source of our message is the Scripture. So in the in the Lord Jesus Christ, it is the Old Testament. So it is based in the New Testament. So we have now the New Testament and also on the Old Testament. In the parallel conversation with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, the same message the Lord Jesus Christ has given them. And beginning from Moses and all the prophets interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Again, repeating, repeating the word scriptures, the Moses and the prophets, uh, the term that they use for the Hebrew Bible of the Hebrew scripture. So this is our basis and what is written there. So referring to the Old Testament, referring to his crucifixion, the clearest passage that we will find is in Psalm chapter 22. That's why when the Lord Jesus Christ is quoting scripture during his time on the Gospels, for example, when he was crucified, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the people who are familiar with the Old Testament will readily remember Psalm 22 because he is actually quoting the first line of Psalm 22. And Psalm 22 actually <clears throat> describes the crucifixion scene. In verse 6, it says, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. And this actually is a direct quotation from those people surrounding the crucifixion. There were the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders. And they were quoting this verse. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him. For he delights in him. Ginayaguta nila. Iniinsulto nila yung Panginoon. By using these words without knowing that they are actually quoting scripture. In verse 14, it describes the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was hanging on the cross. I am poured out like water. And all my bones are out of joint. Poured out like water. Tandaan natin, nagsimula yung kanyang kalbaryo nung uh, Webes, ng gabi. Hanggang at ating gabi, uh, inatid siya at trinayal siya 
hanggang sa umaga, mga alas 6, hanggang uh, dinisisyonan siya. And by 9 o'clock, he was already ready at uh, binubugbog na siya. Tapos pinapalo at dinad, uh, by 9 o'clock, binubuhat niya na yung krus niya. By 12 o'clock, kinako na siya. So makikita natin na talagang ano na siya. He is so uh, dehydrated. I am poured out like water. Wala nang tubig sa kanya. Pawis niya, naubos na. Dahil sa paghihirap na ginagawa sa kanya. Nung pinako siya dun sa cross, ano mararamdaman niya? All my bones are out of joint. Alam mo yon pag nakasabit ka, lahat ng mga buto mo, yung mga joints, ng mga to, okay? halos matanggal-tanggal. Nung sinaksak siya sa puso niya, Scripture says, my heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. So yung pagsaksak mismo ng Roman soldier sa puso niya at nung sumabog yung kanyang puso, melted, lumabas yung tubig at saka dugo. It's already described in Psalm 22. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt. Sabi ko nga, wala na siyang lakas. My tongue sticks to my jaws. Pag namatay ka, Nakalabas na yung dila niya. You lay me in the dust of death. So dito pala makikita natin that as you read Psalm 22, you will think that this is written in Luke chapter 24 because it is actually a description of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why kung may poet or kung lalagay mo sa poetry yung nangyayari sa kay Jesus on the cross, you will read Psalm 22. Again, he said, For dogs encompass me, a company of evil doors encircles me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. During the time nung uh, sinulat ito ni David, ang kanilang pamamaraan, which is the Jewish pamamaraan sa, sa kanilang capital uh, punishment, is pagbabato. Binabato nila hanggang mamatay yung mga uh, kriminal o nagkakasala sa kanila. And it only took about uh, 500 AD uh, BC nung nagsimulang pinapako yung mga tao. And it was the time when the Romans practiced and perfected the crucifixion because they pierced the hands and the feet. And this is how Psalm 22 describes looking forward to the Roman crucifixion, that Jesus will not be stoned to death, but he will be pierced by the hands and by the feet. And again, in verse 17, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They stare and gloat over me. Magigita mo nakasabit siya sa taas, and they are staring at him, looking at him. And then, ano? Nung mamamatay na or gusto nang mamatay sila lahat, the two uh, thieves or robbers or uh, rebels, buhay pa rin sila. Pero si Jesus Christ patay na. Binali ang kanilang mga buto. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Roman soldier checked, patay na siya. That's why hindi na binali yung mga buto niya. That's why he said, I can count all my bones. 17. And also, kung nakasabit ka sa cross, actually, mabibilang mo yung mga buto mo. Dahil nga nakalabas na yung uh, sa katawan mo, makikita na you dried up and nakahang ka dyan. Kung may mga ribs ka, makikita na you can count all the bones. In verse 18, they divide my garments among them and for thing they cast lots. That's why makikita natin when we read the Gospels, we will find that the Roman soldiers, hinati nila yung damit ni yung inner uh, garment ng Panginoon, pinagpupunit-punit nila, pero yung outer garment niya, yung clothing niya, dahil naghihinayan sila, they cast lots. And they were doing that to fulfill the prophecy found in Psalm 22. So makikita natin na 
kung ano may pinagsasab, pina, sinabi ng Panginoon na yung the Old Testament describes the dying Messiah or the, the, the death of the Messiah, nakikita natin sa Psalm 22 and some other references. Of course, kailangan ng mas malalim na pag-aaral para maintindihan yon. In some in Isaiah chapter 52, madalas we talk about the uh, suffering servant. We start with Isaiah 53, but it actually starts in Isaiah 52 in verse 13. It says, Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. Pag tinignan mo, aba, high, lifted up, exalted. But... Uh, pag tinignan mo yung cross, he was actually high there, he is lifted up, he is exalted, but on a cross. And in verse 14, sabi niya, as many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. Kaya pag napanood niyo yung the, the passion of the Christ, ni Mel Gibson, actually it really describes what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. Punit-punit yung kanyang balat, scrape dahil sa pagpapalo sa kanya, yung mukha niya, bugbog sarado. Nakita yung mga boxing, napapanood natin yung mga boxing, yung mga 12 rounds, na ano, gahabok, or, uh, namumula, black and blue yung mukha, makapal, nakatakip na yung mga bata, tapos duguan, o uh, sugat-sugat. So just imagine that, na yung boxing ni gloves, eh kung ano, pinapalo sa'yo, kahoy, o, o matatalim ng mga bagay. This is what we find in the description of Isaiah 52. Nakapako sa cross, nasa itaas, pag tinignan mo siya, hindi mo makikilala na isang tao. He is part of mankind dahil sa sama ng uh, pananakit sa kanya. In Isaiah 53 verse 7, it describes the trial. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, he did not open his mouth. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter, like a sheep that before his shearers is silent. He opened not his mouth. Even... <clears throat> Even Pontius Pilate complained, Do you not understand? Why are you not defending yourself? Why are you not answering my question? Why? Because he does not defend himself. He does not open his mouth in fulfillment of Isaiah 53. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken by the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked. Supposedly, ang lahat na mamamatay na, na crucify, na papako sa cross, mga kriminal, at itinatapon yun okay, sa basurahan or sa, mga, sa kasama ng mga masasamang tao. And yet, in his death, He was placed on a rich man's grave. And this is a fulfillment we find in Isaiah 53 verse 9. With a rich man in his death. Also, pag tinignan natin yung resurrection. We have the death, we have the resurrection. In Isaiah chapter, uh, in Psalm 16, therefore, My heart is glad, my whole being rejoices, my flesh also dwells secure, for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. So nagbabasa tayo sa Psalm, actually, na pag-aralan na, na basa natin ito, Psalm 16, Psalm 22, si Pastor, uh, he mentioned that this, this was a Messianic Psalm, yung Psalm 22, uh, but also yung Psalm 16 and a lot of the Psalms are actually Messianic Psalms. And this one tells us that God himself will not abandon the soul of the Holy One to see corruption. Leading us to the idea or to the concept that he will live again. He will be raised again 
in the resurrection. In Psalm 118, verse 22, the Lord Jesus Christ always mentioned about this in the parables. When he talks about parables and then he accused the people or the religious leaders, ang sabi niya, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So, ang mga tao, again, we go to the religious leaders, supposedly, because psalm is a, a singing, uh, it's a being sung. Kinakanta siya. So, ibig sabihin, it, the, the book of psalm is very familiar. Kabisado nila. And a lot of times, they know what those things mean. Naintindihan nila. In here, sa Psalm 118, so, pag kinukot ni Jesus, and then they will remember, ay, parang nasa Psalm yun ha, Psalm 118, and then they will review, review what is written in the Psalm that the Lord Jesus Christ quoted. This is what it says. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us access. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. So, ang sinasabi dito is, this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice. It is marvelous in their eyes or in our eyes. So dito, tinutuko yung reject na stone, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a coming day when everybody will rejoice because the Lord has made that day. And that is what we call the Lord's Day. The, lay, the day of His resurrection. The thing that when you study the Bible actually, even the even the scholars themselves, even the Bible scholars and uh, Bible pastors and teachers sa ngayon, talagang it's quite difficult. You, you have to dig in. Kailang pag-aaralan mo yung Old Testament actually to look for passages about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, about the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Sabi nga, it is hidden. Kasi kung hindi siya hidden, eh makikita ni Satanas yun. Makikina ng kalaban na, ay, ganito pala yung plano, ito pala yung, ano, ay, huwag natin gawin. Hindi. Actually, akala ni Satan, ng devil, eh, he succeeded when he crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. He thought that, oh, panalo tayo. When they realized that it was actually part of God's plan to save his people yung mamamatay yung Messiah. All the while, Satan was doing something to kill the Jesus, pinasukan niya si, si ano, yung uh, uh, Judas, inano yan yung mga uh, religious leaders against Jesus hanggang papapatay siya. He never understood that it was the plan of God all along. So what is the message of our mission? The message of the mission is that Jesus Christ died and resurrected. The third thing about that message is that the mission or the message is also to proclaim, proclaim repentance. Dito medyo na, ano, na, I have to reread and reread this again. Kasi when you read it, sabi niya, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed. So nung binasa ko to, sabi ko baliktad yata, forgiveness, dapat ang nauna, forgiveness for those who repent should be proclaimed. Pero yung inuuna, actually it means the same thing, pero yung emphasis is on repentance. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Yung nakaka-benefit lang nung kamatayan ni Kristo ay yung mga nag-repent. The word repent, actually, eh, ano natin, eh, bakit wala rito yung belief? Because in terms of understanding the Bible, the New Testament, repentance and belief is one and the same. Belief and repentance is one and the same. 
Kaya pag binasa mo siya at maano mo, iniano nila, pinagpapalit-palit nila or ini-interchange nila. And the concept here is to proclaim repentance. And if you repent, then there is forgiveness for you. But the last, I, I really uh, emphasize yung forgiveness. Pero yung forgiveness is on the premise that you repent. So sa ating pagdadala ng minsay, tayo ba nag-repent din? Para masabi sa at natin sa iba na, uy, mag kayo para may kapatawaran ng kasalanan para sa inyo. Dapat manimpalataya kayo kay Jesus para may pananam, uh, pakaligtasan kayo na bibigay. This is the proclamation that is given in the mission. The mission is a proclamation of repentance. And within that repentance is forgiveness of sins. When you look at this passage, magigita mo, in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Alam mo, pag binasa mo yung the book of Acts, you will realize that the disciples thought that the gospel is only for the Jews. Para lang sa mga Udyo. It took a new, the, the, an angel and a dream from the Lord God himself, from the Lord Jesus in Acts chapter 10, for Peter to go to the place of Cornelius to share the gospel, the Roman centurion. So yung magikita natin na all the while they thought that in Acts chapter 2, these are all the proselytes, all the uh, Israelites, Mahudyo. So they, they share the gospel and then in chapter 8, eventually they go out. Pero still, they have limited ang kanilang pag-share ng gospel is in the synagogues. And then the proselyte, of course, yung, sa, sa, yung uh, eunuch. Uh, Ethiopian eunuch, he is also a proselyte, pero they never understood that it's for the nation. It's for the Gentiles as well as for the Jews or the Jews as well as for the Gentiles. Kaya dito in the message na magkikita natin in the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, ang emphasis is to all the nations, both Jews and Gentiles. Yun yung inexplain ni Apostle Paul, bakit pinaulit-ulit niya nyo that only for the Jews but also for the Gentiles? Kasi nung una, akala ng mga disciples at mga unang mga Kristiyano para lang sa mga Hudyo. And then they realized that, that the promises made in Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 3 is not only for him but him to be a conduit para alagyan or daanan for the blessing also of the whole families of the earth, including the Gentiles. And these are, we are called to be witnesses. Again, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, ito na, after the Pentecost, the preacher Peter, and then this is what he called, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Repent. For the forgiveness. So you will be given forgiveness if you repent. And last of all, you will find here that there is power in the mission. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the proclamation of the mission, there is power. In Luke chapter 24 verse 49, it says... I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The message that we bring, kung minsan kasi nagdududa tayo, magsishare kasi baka hindi naman tayo tanggapin, baka hindi tayo convincing, baka mahina tayo sa explanation, hindi maliwanag, or di ba, kaya hindi tayo magaling talaga magsalita. So we always doubt that and then we say na kulang tayo sa kalaman. But we have to understand that ang ating mission is just share the gospel 
because we are not the one doing convincing. Hindi tayo yung nagko-convince. It's the Holy Spirit. There is power within the words that we are saying. Kaya ang sabi dito ni Jesus, clothed with power from on high. In Luke chapter 24, again, balik tayo dun sa the, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Ito yung sabi nila. When you read the Bible, when you open the scripture, when you do Bible study, does your heart burn? Does your heart burn? Parang umiinit ba yung puso mo pag nakakarinig ka ng salita ng Panginoon? Umiinit ba yung puso mo pag nagba-Bible study? Umiinit ba yung puso mo pag nakakarinig ka ng preaching of God's Word? That is the feeling of having the power of the Holy Spirit. Ito yung pangangailangan natin ngayong panahon. Kasi madalas in-ignore lang natin. Huwag na lang tayo mag Sunday school. Huwag na lang tayo mag Bible study. But the fact is, there is the power of the Holy Spirit. The power is in the Word of God. And it burns. Miinit. Naglalagay ng apoy sa ating mga puso to do mission. In Acts chapter 2, balik na naman ulit tayo sa Pentecost. Tingnan mo kung anong nangyari. Nung nagpipreach si Peter, kinukote niya yung Joel, kinukote niya yung Old Testament about what is happening and that is all of these are fulfillment of the promises made of the uh, prophecies and promises that was made in the Old Testament. When they heard, anong sabi? Cut to the heart. Cut to the heart. So talagang ang target ng ating message at ang power na ibinibigay sa atin ay patungo sa puso. Kaya huwag tayong magdududa. Huwag tayong magdududa na walang kapangyarihan ang salita ng Panginoon. Bible lang yan. Salita lang yan. There is power in the words of Scripture. There is power in the words of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, sa ating ginagawang mission, we have to consider that the message that we bring is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kailangan yon That the source of our message has to be the Word of God. Word of God. Nagkikita niyo ako rito palagi, ay, uh, ano, pag nagbibigay ko ng example, in-example ko rin yung istorya din. Istorya ni Job, istorya ng ta, ta, the two road people from Emmaus, the, the suffering servant. You don't have to go out to so, so, uh, scripture para mag-invento ng para magaling na ano, mag-iisip o ma, ma, mahilig ka magbasa ng current affairs. Kailangan mo lang talaga is you stick to scripture and that is enough. Why? Because there is power in the word. And that is the message of our mission. Shall we pray? Our Lord and gracious Father, we pray and thank you, Lord, for this time once again. We pray, Lord, that you will really prick our heart, cut our heart, burn our heart, Lord, to share your gospel, to share your word to the lost, especially to our Thai friends, knowing that, that you died also for all the nations, both for Jews and Gentiles. We pray, Lord, that uh, you encourage us also to be able to fulfill the mission, the great commission, and forgive us, Lord, if we have failed in the past Uh, in our past Christian life. And we pray, Lord, that with this uh, mission month, we will be encouraged to at least focus on one person that we know and share the gospel to them. So we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.